Let's just, get the, oh, just a little, uh, 10 minutes of aroma. Oh, it's like a instant burner. Yep. You're going to be my most sophisticated person on this podcast. You think so? <laughs> yes, but that's cool. <laughs> my other friends are a little, you know, you know. <laughs> no, dude, never, never been down that road. You never met them? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're a little crazy. They're good people. Just, <laughs> I also was in a weird, weird time in my life then too. So oh. it wasn't all, you know, is this fucking working or did I not let it burn long enough? So I did that um, photo shoot for neighborhood and then they invited me to their friends and family exhibition for the winter collection 23. Um, so I went and bought some of their stuff, but- In their Japan? Yeah. Their clothes are so expensive, dude. Like I, I had a few things in my cart at the ex exhibition and it was like almost $2,000. <laughs> so I just ditched the clothing idea because I'll go buy like a shirt occasionally because they have a store over near the Red, Red Brick Warehouse in Yokohama. Oh, really? Yeah, that's where I got the incense. The store is at Red Brick or buy it? It's near it. Where, you know where the Carhartt Work in Progress store is? Actually, yeah, I do. It's in that same hmm. strip right there. Interesting. Um, but instead of buying clothes, I bought like this suit. It hasn't come in the mail yet because all this stuff will get sent to my house. But it, it's a big Jaguar head like this. And it's all black. And then the incense go inside and the smoke rolls out of his mouth. It's pretty oh, cool. Oh yeah, I think you were telling me about that. Yeah. <laughs> Neighborhood makes some really cool shit, so. Nice. They have cooler ones. They have um, one that's like a gun, like a, a hand, a tatted up hand, like holding a pistol and the smoke rolls out of the end of the pistol. They have some really cool ones, but every time I go to the store in Yokohama and try to buy one off the shelf, they're like, those aren't for sale. <laughs> well, then why are they here? Yeah. So but, uh, that's cool. Anyway, so this is my buddy. What's your name? Jordan. It's Jordan. Jordan Wojcik. Yes. Uh, we have a very odd history here. We yeah, met in a very odd time. What was it? Like three years ago? Yeah. Two. It was like the first year I was here. Yeah, I think it was too. We randomly were at the bar in front of base. Yep. Which yeah. One, was, which one was it? Pine tree? Pine tree. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Pine tree taking all the perverse shots. <laughs> yeah. Taking all our money. Yeah. Uh, who are you with? Um, I think I might've been with uh, Sykes that night. Cam, the Cam. big MA oh. that I train with sometimes. No, I think it was with the guy that with the MR2. Oh, Abby. Yeah, because Abby was still here. Yeah, I yeah. was with Abby. Yeah. That's right. Um, yep. I was with, I don't remember who I was with. You were with everybody. No, like you were the with whole the whole block. the whole gang. Yeah. yeah. I don't know who initiated the talk, but we somehow started talking. Yeah. I think you did. This is an alcohol night. Or, yeah, definitely. No, you guys, I know what it was. You guys were talking about maintenance on the helicopters. Yeah. And I thought it was something to do with rescue swimmers. So I was like, oh, oh. are you guys crewmen? Oh. And then one of the guys was like, do we fucking look like crewmen? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I mean, I don't know, dude. Anybody could be a crewman, really. Um, yeah. and, then we, and then we started chatting. And yeah. And then I think you thought I was a crewman. And I think I was lying to you like, yeah, I'm totally crewman. Yeah, yeah. I think that's how it started. Yeah. And but then. I mean, after that, though. I mean, did we, didn't we run into each other in the mountains in Hakaba? for the second time, and that was when we were like, all right, we should like start chilling. Was it? I saw you everywhere, dude. Yeah. I see this, <laughs> I would see this guy everywhere, randomly, always, yeah. constantly, doing something. Not, and not, like, it was at the gym and stuff too, yeah. but it wasn't always just at the gym. Cause like a lot of times you do that with people that like live a similar lifestyle to you. Yeah. But it was like random places, yeah. you know what I mean? And then we were in the mountains that one time. Yeah, which was four hours away. Yeah. And then you somehow that happened to be in the same little like restaurant. Yeah, no, I, I messaged you, I think. I was like, yo, like you're in the mountains too. But then when I walked in, I remember we both had like Hoka hiking boots on, <laughs> our like uh, CLE hats, and yeah. we were like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, what the hell's going on, dude? Yeah. Um, yeah, I just think, I think we became really good friends was, I don't know, I just liked your vibe with the whole you chilling, always 
aesthetically nice and you'd always fucking compliment each other, but not in a homo way. Hey yo, Oni Champ, pull up. That was all homo. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, it was mutual. It was definitely like, oh, this guy's got a really, you know, really good aesthetic. Always seemed to have a really good vibe. Um, yeah, and then the more we chilled, and yeah, for sure. Every time I saw you, you had some steezy shit on. Like, <laughs> should I know too that a lot of people don't know? Exactly. You, know, you were wearing bodega and shit like that. I'm like, dude, nobody knows this stuff. So it was kind of cool to. Nobody does. You're the only person that knows. Yeah. So once all that, you know, and then a few more snowboarding trips. I think the times in the mountains really solidified our like, Oh, yeah. Because when you go, I try to go with you. Yeah, and it's always such a... I mean, the mountains is such a cool place up there. Yeah, that's probably... We honestly, can... I think Hakuba is like one of my favorite places in Japan. <laughs> yeah, and we can dive more into that, too. And we can talk a little bit more about Japan, but I absolutely love Hakuba. I'll be back this year for New Year's again. Same. Just it, because I thought about, I can go somewhere else, but it's just every every year I've been here and I've gone up there for New Year's, it's never disappointed. No, there's so many people there. Yep. So many, like America, like Aussies, I mean Aussies, they're taking over that place. Yeah, but it's so fun to party with them and oh, hang yeah. out. And it's a good time. And I mean, and the snow there is spectacular. Yep. There's, I don't know, did you ever go to Hokkaido? Were you, weren't you No, trying? I want to go before I leave, but being that this is my last winter here, I'll probably hit Hakuba. I might, that's not true. I might be able to make Hokkaido happen. I feel like that's such a pain. My friend did it. You know, Lewis? Yeah. So Lewis would, he had, you know, he had to carry his whole snowboard up to the airport. It yeah. seems annoying. Yeah. But I would just rent out there probably. Just bring my gear and then just rent out there. Rather that actually than, would be a, not a bad idea. Yeah. Then you don't have to bring all the shit with you. Yeah, because he did all that. Then he had to go on a train, go to the mountain and all this. Yeah. And all that. So it sounds pretty expensive. But I've heard this, the boarding up there is totally worth it. Yeah, I heard the the snow and there's out there is like com destroys Hakaba. Yeah. So. What's that other mountain that is up north? Norzau. Bison. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard that one's pretty good too. With the but... snow monsters. Yeah, with the trees that are like. <laughs> They're just covered in snow. Yeah, those are that's pretty cool. That's really the main reason I would want to go up there. I also wouldn't mind going to uh, Sapporo for like the ice fest and stuff like that. Yeah, I was trying to get through that. Too. There's so much, man. You live here and you're like, oh, I got three years. I can do everything in three years. No. And if you owe tip, you got four. But even that, like, you don't realize there's so much to do out here. And to get all that done before you leave is kind of difficult. Yeah, that's why I kind of had to extend a lot. Yeah. I feel like I did a lot, though. I feel like you did a lot, too. Mm hmm. You did a lot of hiking too, which I kind of wish I would have got on board with. Um, this is hard to find people with gear. Yeah. Like you don't have all the gear, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like my friend, my last hiking trip that I did one too, yeah. he had no gear. We rented it all from the NWR. They, all, I mean, they have like walking sticks and everything. Yeah, like, but oh. it was all ass. Yeah, just shit gear. It was so bad. He yeah. was freezing his butt off. This would have been the place to invest in that stuff too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, next one going to Virginia. <laughs> Is there anything? Shenandoah. Else? You can hike Shenandoah, supposedly. I just found that out from today from a friend, though. I don't even know anything about Virginia. Yeah, me neither. I've never even been there. But <laughs> I got orders there, so. Yeah. We just totally sidetracked. <laughs> Where were you from? Uh, originally from Ocala, Florida. Uh, I lived there till I was about five. Oh. And then I moved to Georgia, uh, right outside of Atlanta. And. Um, was raised there. I mean, I, I came back to Florida for, to visit my dad and, you know, vacation and stuff. But if people ask, normally I just say I'm from Georgia just because that was so much of my most molding years were lived there. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I'm sure you get it a lot, but do they, you do you get a lot. Um, you're from California? Uh, yeah, sometimes. Um, you would totally fit in. Have you ever been? Yeah. My sister lives in Carlsbad. So, oh, okay. um, Start for town. yeah, and then my, my brothers and sisters, like my, my half brothers and sisters, so same mom, different dad, they grew up in Temecula. So oh. a lot of like, I, I say a lot, I, I went to visit four or five times throughout childhood, but my brothers came to live with me. So a lot of my direct influence was California, Florida. Um, so definitely like, you know, 
West Coast and East Coast, both coastal living. Yeah. Um, is Georgia different from California vibe? Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I feel like I lived in a pretty cool town. Um, and as I was going through high school and stuff, they built like a cancer treatment center in our town. So it's the population started to grow pretty rapidly and people from all over were coming to our town. Um, but it was definitely like, like a, a southern, southern town, you know, bless your heart, you know, <laughs> churches on every corner. Really? Um, yeah, so it was definitely, but I was always, I was definitely always like the outcast. I say that, I hung out with, one weekend I'd be with the most redneck dudes in the middle of the woods hunting and shooting guns and sleeping on, in the woods for the weekend. Was that the friend I met? Uh, who? <laughs> Lee or Grant? Grant. Yeah, not even, dude. Way more. Way than more. That. Yeah. Damn. I'm talking like we like trapping raccoons and like one time my buddy Mason trapped a raccoon and put like a 150 pound test on his fishing rod and made like a loop around the exit of the cage and yeah. let the raccoon out. It ran through the loop, tightened up, and he let it run back into the woods and then he would just reel it back in. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fucked up, but it's like that that level of country. Oh, that's pretty. And then the next weekend I'd be in the middle of Atlanta, like in a like Magic City or something, you know. Not not literally, but I'm saying, you know, hanging out with a completely different different crowd. So it was Yeah. Um but I was always the, the surfer kid in vans and board shorts at school and stuff. And no one was No there. one understood it. They were like. <laughs> That'd be pretty weird, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, that's funny. But in Florida and California, that's normal. You know what I mean? Like showing up to school in board shorts and a hoodie is like, oh, uh, you probably went surfing before school or something, you know? Yeah. So. Or you just don't give a fuck. Yeah, or you just don't, yeah, or you just don't give a <laughs> shit. So um, it's funny too, because I definitely had my era where I would like wore like, boots and square toe boots and jeans and like tucked my polos in and oh really yeah i had my era where i tried to like you know fit into the southern what was cool you know putting putting dip in like 10th grade year <laughs> carrying around a can of dip in my back pocket you know really trying to fit I the would vibe i never but, see that dude it wasn't. your girl you ever had long ass hair yeah but that was later in life that was modeling years when I was, oh. when, I, when I started modeling, I, I grew my hair up to like probably my shoulders. We'll get into that. <laughs> huh? We'll get into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, it's just wild to me. The last edit I did was, oh, come by. Uh, it took me the whole week to edit the whole podcast for one, one whole hour. Yeah. Yeah, it's no joke, dude. But I'm like, I'm not good. I'm good enough. Yeah, I don't know, your shit always turns out really cool. So, everyone was tripping about the uh, Hakko video. Oh, really? Like Diego and Grant and Lee saw it and they were like, dude, that's so sick. <laughs> it is cool. I wish I got more of you guys. The street footage at the night. <laughs> Who's he drink? It's not a real microphone. <laughs> <laughs> It's not a real microphone. I don't know how to do this. I wish I had my camera. We're like, she's holding the drink of I'm like, it's not a mic. <laughs> it's not a mic. <laughs> that was funny. That was a fun ass. I'm night. glad I videoed that. There was also that absolutely beautiful French chick that I was like drooling over. And then I finally got the urge, like the nerve to go talk to her. And she's like, I have a boyfriend. And I was like, oh yeah, that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That one was like, dude. And you got the fucking person that was, was what are they called? Nomads? Oh yeah, the nomad chick. <laughs> I still follow her on Instagram, Sarah. Really? Yeah, she's cool, man. Oh, she's shit. like all over the place. I think she's in Costa Rica right now. That's wild. Like eating, eating street fruit How and you like- I need to do that. I don't think she does. That's the crazy thing about her. She, like, she just tries to hitchhike? She just hitchhikes and gets dead end jobs, like, or not dead end, um, you know, loosen jobs whenever she can, like. Again. Bartend, or can I help you? You know, clean up your property. I don't know. I don't know how she does it, but she definitely didn't have like a. I'm doing this with financial stability vibe. <laughs> <laughs> She's like just like enjoying the. I day, think she day had some day. dreads, not because she wanted to have dreads, but probably just because she, <laughs> she's not showering every day. <laughs> I'm sorry. It'd if, probably be if this makes it to the vlog and Sarah sees us. I'm sorry, Sarah. I thought you were a really dope person. <laughs> Um, genuinely, genuinely, but, but, uh, <laughs> no, it's funny cause I don't see how you can do that, but I think only can, a girl can do that. A guy can't just 
walk around. You could, like, but you're gonna be like a complete Wookiee. Like. <laughs> <laughs> But like you can't just knock on people's door like yo, can I help you fix your shit for some money? I mean maybe. Yeah. It could be, but I'm pretty sure girls would probably be. Yeah. Well, it depends on yeah. what kind of work job you're trying to do. Yeah. Who knows, dude? I mean, I don't know. I wanted to talk about your house. I, let's, wait, let's do it. I would love if anyone could see this right now. Uh, actually, I oh no, I didn't bring my camera. Your other camera. So I can take photos. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it's just a nice place. This is a brand new spot you got? Yeah, um, there was one owner before me. Um, oh, really? Yeah. I thought you, oh. It was my buddy, though, that, and he, when he moved out, that's kind of how it happened. Oh, he right. was moving out, and there were some things he didn't want to move, and he was like, hey, do you want my place? And I was like, I was thinking about moving over to Yokohama or to the beach and commuting every day just because living there would be awesome. I'm sure. How but would then, you, how would you even do that? Oh, uh, you have connections, which yeah. I have to ask about that later. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can you can go to Minato. You can go anywhere. Flat. You can go anywhere. Yeah. You just have to have the connection. Yeah. And I was gonna have to train, train to work, and then leave my car in the sofa a lot. There was just a lot. And then he showed me the place. I had been here before, but he showed it to me like empty. And I kind of had a vision of like what I could make it look like. And I loved the natural light. So That's I was a good like, fucking vision. Yeah. Uh, I just, the lighting looks crazy. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, like you can move the lighting. Yeah, That's all wild. the track lighting, you can totally uh, readjust it. And, yeah. And, and then, the sunset's like right back here too. So at night it gets like pink and purple in, in the living room. It's really. You have high high roof. Which is super rare out here. Yeah, you don't yeah. have that in here. This is like a modern house from America yeah. and it's in Japan. Japan houses uh, are very small squared off like every room is separate yeah. from it, from each other so yeah i just love this thing yeah super uh, super lucky though it, it all yeah. kind of happened we were supposed to podcast outside today uh but it's summer and it's stupid hot yeah so i, I was looking at here i had a vision like you did yep i'm like why don't we just fucking do it in here <laughs> where it's cool oh we were talking uh this is what are these monsters so Yes, they're real. This one over here is struggling a little bit because I left it in the sun um, last weekend for a little too long. They require sunlight, but not too much. And I think he got a little overheated. Um, yeah, I just thought it was funny because you said the, pot, the other fucking interview. Between two ferns? Between two ferns, and you said this is between two. Monsters. Monsters. Yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of like a... Hopefully, there's no copyright issues with that. No. We use Monsters instead of Ferns, so there can't be. <laughs> I haven't, I only seen like a few, that was just like an interview. It's like an Eric Andre kind of thing. Kind of, yeah. It's it's Zach Galifianakis Skit. interviewing all kinds of people. It's definitely, it has to be scripted. Just because it's way too funny to not be pre-planned to some degree. The one with Brad Pitt's hilarious. He does one with Obama, Justin Bieber. He doing with Obama? Wow. Yeah. And he's like, you think he would be like a little more respectful because it's Obama? Absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> um, That's funny. Yeah. In the, in the Brad Pitt one, he chews uh, Brad Pitt's chewed up gum. Brad Pitt like coughs it out on the table in between them. He like I grabs think it I remember and chewing that. it. <laughs> <laughs> Brad Pitt gets mad. He's like, that, that was my last piece. So he hands it back to him and then Brad Pitt start, starts chewing it. <laughs> That's good. Oh yeah. Okay. So, um, so you're in the modeling when you're in Florida? No, Georgia. Mind you, I moved to Georgia when I was like five. So you're with modeling me. started when I was like 18. So how had that, that happen? Um, it's actually kind of a funny story. I walked into a vape store. I didn't even vape. I think I was buying vapes for like a kid younger than me. Um, one of my buddies that I worked landscaping with. I walked in, the girl walking the counter was a girl I went to high school with a few years older than me. I would always hit on her in class, but she was a senior when I was like a freshman or sophomore. So yeah. I'd be like, please just give me a chance. <laughs> you know, just see, maybe I change the world. Like I would always just mess with her. And uh, I walked in, she was working the counter and we were both kind of like, I think I know you. And then she was like, Jordan Wojcik. And I was like, yeah, what's up? Like, how you doing? She's like, oh my God, like you've grown up. You're so like, you look totally different. You're like a man now. And I was like, thanks. And then she's like, listen, I'm, I started modeling with this agency. Like you should come to auditions. We only have like seven models. He's trying to grow his agency. You should come. 
at the time I'm working landscaping, like square toe boots, <laughs> carpenter pants, like base, camo baseball cap. I'm like the real nah. car. Heart. Yeah, I'm I'm the real Carhartt. You know what I mean? You look it up in the definition, it's probably a yeah, picture of me. It's not not like what Carhartt is right now. Yeah. So um she talked me into it. I went to auditions one day and uh I remember I wore that exact similar outfit to the audition and then they're like, Hey, can you take your hat off? I took my hat off and like my hair fell down, I had long hair and they're yeah. like, Oh shit. Signed and then I mean from then on out for I think 2018 was my first, 2017 was my first fashion week. Fashion week, it's yeah, like a gig. New York. Kind of like a gig. Everyone goes to New York. Um, yeah. Any model like actually like doing like, pretty good the with walk. an agency. Yeah, you go audition. So there's like a whole like week of auditions and castings. And then there's like a whole week of shows. Um, and, and that's anything from beginning designers yeah who are having small shows somewhere to the Vogue and V files and hype beast shows where, you know, who picks like, do the, like who picks your outfit and stuff? Um, the designers. So like you, you go to New York and like cliche model, black t-shirt, black jeans, a yeah. shoe that you can walk around the city all day in a backpack with like your own personal, like hair and makeup stuff in it in case you need to like, do it on the fly or a designer doesn't have what they need for your specific hair or your specific complexion. Um, and then you walk around, you have an agent representing you out there. So they're, they're on the computer the whole time you're there getting you auditions, castings in New York. Oh, okay. Um, but you're also walking around, you know, shaking hands and kissing babies. Like, Hey, you know, you have comp cards. It's like a business card with all your best, you know, your portfolio pictures, your height, your weight, your eye color, your shoe size. Huh. And you're kind of walking around promoting yourself, but you're also just getting, hey, you're getting a text. Hey, go to this casting, this address, this time. And then you finish that and you get another text. It's like, hey, go to this casting, this address, this time. Um, so you're kind of running around the city for a week, just casting for That's shows. Cool. Yeah. Um, and then after that, preceding that is a week of, it's not always a week and a week. Sometimes they're intermingled. You might have a casting and a show in one day. Um, none of it's paid. Majority of it is oh, a pay. Damn. It's all um, publicity work. So you're you're hoping to book with the big wigs. You're hoping Gucci sees you and says, "Hey, we want you to walk for our show." Oh, and then that's when they get it. Yeah, and then yeah. you you make it to some pretty you know big magazines, some pretty big campaign stuff, and then I mean I, I think after our first fashion week, my buddy Jake moved out or not moved, but went out to Paris for like a month and a half. Came home with like sixty k and was like the face of their uh, magazine campaign. Yeah. So. Uh, That's pretty sick. Yeah. There's some I'm cool sure it's there. so fucking annoying. Like you're not getting paid for it, but you want to like, yeah. Like dude, just let somebody see me. Yeah. You know, you know, there's, there's potential good that comes from it. And at the end of the day, like it's work, but it doesn't feel like work. I mean, you're hanging out with some fun people and yeah. every night there's a party that because you're a model, you're going to like, you're gonna go sit in the best part of the club and yeah. you know so um but yeah that first fashion week i i, I went uh, i was in the street super cool designer I, I knew she was a designer right when she walked up to me she had like leather pants super tall like black brimmed hat she's like hey what are you doing tonight and i'm like i don't have any shows and she's like come with me and so she like walked me through new york down into an alley and like into a production room and v files which is like a pretty big pop culture editing company. Um, they had, you know, 10 designers set up all walking for their show. And she's like, hey, this guy over here needs a model that looks just like you, so like, go. Oh. French dude, barely spoke English. Me and him talked. He told me to pick one of the outfits <laughs> available to wear for his show. We put it on, it fit. He was like, cool, you're walking to my show tonight. Um, <laughs> Fuck. And then it ended up being a Young Thug. Young Thug has an album cover on his Jeffrey album where he's in like a dress with like a Japanese like, mm -hmm. like hat. It's like really weird. He's in, it was that designer, Alessandro Tricon was the designer. Um, so it was a really cool show. I mean, the whole show played through and then our designer was the final designer and they turned the lights down and the music went really slow and they rolled out a piano to the runway and, um, we had to walk like very slow and methodical and I, that show ended up, all of our photos ended up making it to Vogue. So that was really cool. It was my first ever fashion week and 
you know, saw some pretty cool success there. And then met a lot of really cool people that night. Young Thug, Playboy Cardi. Um, wow. And then went to the club afterwards with everybody and party till six in the morning. See, this is what I'm saying. You're the most sophisticated person on this podcast. Nothing about that week was sophisticated. <laughs> now, here's what's way more sophisticated. So you got out here yep. and then you're applying for uh, agents? Yeah, I, I wasn't going to. Um, well, maybe. Decided my, my modeling career was, had come and gone, but my buddy Kevin, are you worried about the lighting? Yeah. You can check it. What happened to your elbow? <laughs> I just noticed that. Funny story, my elbow today, do you shave your arms? You don't. I don't. So I was shaving before I saw you because yeah. I always do it before the weekend. I fucking cut my fucking elbow. Okay. Dude, I did it once, I, but I will say I did Nair. It oh. made my entire arm break out. Like, uh, insanely. Nair, you might have been a, um, what is it called? Allergic? Yeah, allergic to guys. <laughs> but it was weird. I think it was more so like clogged pores. It was super weird. Maybe. You um, had a scrub? Did I have a scrub? Yeah, like, there's like a scrub for after you're done shaving. Oh, no, I didn't. I probably should I have. have. that. Yeah. Um, some girl fucking told me that because yeah. I sometimes have bumps. She's like, you should probably like exfoliate after you shave. Yeah. Huh? Because it like opens up your pores. Interesting. I definitely like the aesthetic of it. Like, and it was it, at the time I was like 200 pounds. Yeah, you... So I looked like oh. I shaved and I looked fucking huge. Oh. Um, How much do you weigh now? 187. I'm down substantially. Yeah. Oh, damn. I just stopped. Uh, well, first off, I stopped taking creatine. That shit. So I is lost a lot actually... of water weight. A fucking a secret. Yeah. Oh, it's insane. Um, but I, I felt fluffy. It's the crazy thing is I didn't even lose that much weight, but everyone thought I lost a shit ton of weight because all the water weight in my face went away. Yeah. So everyone thought that I was like, like my friends were like, and like my Japanese grandparents were like worried about me. They were like, "Are you like eating?" I'm like, "Yeah, I'm still like I'm really strong. I feel really great actually right now. I just yeah. stopped lifting and eating six meals." A day and lived in like crazy. Well, if you were 200 pounds, would you be able to do what you? We fucking sidetracked, but like, yeah. So when you were, uh, mo you were modeling out here. Yeah. Did you have to be lighter or heavier? They prefer. Um, there's there's a market for anything out here. Um, literally anything. There's a market for. I don't. Really? Yeah. Think Short they're... people, tall people, tatted people, no tats, fit people, fat people. It doesn't like. Um, I mean, yes, you're going to get more bookings in shape with some height and a slender build. They don't want you to be massive. Um, yeah. fashion week, all the high fashion stuff, they want you to be like grossly thin. I figured, um, that's kind of why I stopped modeling in Atlanta. It was all the, all the agent, all the people, not my agent specifically, but all the people were like, um, clientele was like, we want him to be slimmer. He's too broad. He's too, and I'm like, well, I'm not going to change that. Like, I'm not going to just stay like, yeah, I figure that's fucking annoying. Yeah. They almost want you to have like an androgynous look yeah. like, so, but yeah, I wasn't going to do it out here. And then my buddy, Kevin, um, stationed over in Yokosuka, crazy Kev, he'll probably see this. Um, <laughs> Fucking awesome dude. He was like, he saw some of my pictures from when I was home and he was like, dude, you got a model. Like, send your pictures in. And I was like, dude, I've been thinking about it. I was like, you know what? This was my, this was the nudge I needed, I'll do it. So I sent my pictures to like six or seven agencies. Kind of understanding I probably wouldn't get picked up for like Bravo or Image, the kind of like the bigger agencies out here. Um, and ended up getting perf picked up by Free Wave. Um, and then I think another agency called like Y and C, I, I spoke with them a little bit, which ended up being better than the bigger agencies because the bigger agencies you're in contract with and you kind of have to be at the gigs they tell you to be at. Yeah. Being in the military, I don't really have that freedom. Mm -hmm. So with Free Wave, um, they send me a gig and I say, you know, I'm available, I'm not available, or I might be available, let me check my schedule. Yeah. Um, so that kind of works out really good for for me i get the freedom to decide what i what i shoot and don't shoot um and then my agency in atlanta still represents me so i get uh. gigs from them too um on occasion i'll get a gig from them i actually 
am waiting to hear back on probably one of the best gigs I've ever gotten right now. Really? So, yeah. Um, you think you still do that? With fingers crossed, I can. Your I can fucking do. awesome orders you got, you douche? Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully <laughs> Hopefully, it's soon enough. Because um, it's a really cool gig and a really well paid gig. So, um, unfortunately, I can't. Well, elaborate on it right now just because yeah. until I get it and it's booked. No, it's all um, good. I wouldn't do that either. But it's, yeah, hopefully. We'll see. So, yeah, I started modeling out here. Things go great. It works with my schedule in the military just well, fine. I was just saying, it's like wild. You, I've never met anyone that was, ah, uh, maybe. I don't know. I haven't met someone that was in the military and you can fucking model at the same time. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe you did just never. Maybe you should be a group. Yeah, maybe you are. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I also am. So there's some people out there killing it. So yeah, it's a good sure. pastime. Most importantly, it puts extra money in my pocket. So yeah, for sure. It's always everyone wants passive fucking income. Yeah, and the connections that come from it are really cool too. You meet some really cool people, and it keeps it keeps my feet in the creative industry. Yeah, which is something I have a passion for. And um, joining the military, that's probably one of the hardest things was to let go of, because the rest of it of the military I loved, but kind of not having the freedom to always explore that creativity um, in your fashion or whatever it might be, you know, your hairstyle, your tattoos, the military limits that a little bit, so. I mean, yeah, you can't really, yeah. They um, restrict you from a lot of things. They don't restrict me from making art in my house, which is cool, which is kind of cool. I've gotten, I've learned that I do like to do, you know, small odd and art projects in, in the house and actually doing canvas art and stuff like that, so. Um, that's, yeah, that's dope. You find other avenues, for sure. Yeah. I mean, that's why I'm sticking with video editing and yeah. videos. Yeah, you're also really good at it, too, so, yeah. You don't see it. We're always our biggest critic, our own biggest critic. That so. is 100% agreeable, but... Is that time? What? For another? Are you running out? No, I've got, um, I'm out, but I have this really good Kyoto whiskey that I'm happy to share with you. Are you sure? Yeah, oh, 100%, yeah. I'd love to. I saw, it looks nice as fuck. Yeah, no, I'd love to share it. Okay. Let me, let me do that. I'll even bring a bottle over here. <laughs> How'd you get this? My friend, oh. um, she went out there for- You never been to Kyoto? Nope. What are you doing? You need to go there, dog. I know, I'm planning to before I leave, but I just <laughs> still haven't been there. You totally have to. That's probably my favorite like area. Okay, well you said that about Hakuba, so No, okay, so. <laughs> Hakuba. Different, different vibes. <laughs> yeah. We can continue on there. Kyoto, this, this city is just fucking beautiful. Uh, I think you, you talked about this, like everything is a photo. Yes. Like everything is. If you like aesthetics, that is yeah. your town. That's why I'm so surprised you haven't been there. You would love it, dude. It's like straight up like LA. I don't, I mean, I don't really like LA because all the, dirty and all the douchebags there, but um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're not wrong. <laughs> but I meant like just the kind of hipster kind of thing is there, and it's like pretty fucking nice. I okay. forgot something to stir these up. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks, man. Yeah, absolutely, man. The Kyoto special. Um, not my favorite whiskey I've had out here. No, it's Hibiki. Really? Mine's Cheetah. Really? Yeah. Love it. Habiki's Cheetah's really good. Habiki's so smooth. Yeah. If you haven't had Habiki, that is like my, I don't know. I I bought, every time I like try to buy whiskey for fit people, I buy a Habiki bottle, which yeah. is like $100. Mm -hmm. Cheetah's like, it's like kind of almost the same. I think it's like 80. I, I, think, I don't think it's um a super expensive, but uh, yeah, I love it. That's normally what I drink at Heroes and stuff like that, so. Heroes? Yeah, Root Down. That little local spot I go to uh, often. You always do the cheers? Yeah. That's how you did it last time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when, when did you go? I'm like part-time oh. bartender there, so. <laughs> Fourth of July? Yeah, no, um, no, because the night before the 4th of July, I went to bed early. It was the 2nd of July. What did you do? Uh, 3rd of July, did you do anything for 4th of July? I think the 3rd, I just went to the pool, drank water, read a book, chilled. The pool? On base? Yeah. Oh, shit. I just wanted to be in the sun and, uh, be able to sit somewhere and read. So how was that? It was nice. Have you ever been there? Yeah. Oh. It's pretty chill. Um, I've never walked in there. I just feel like that would just bring me back 
horrible memories of my pool in my hometown. Yeah, no, it, it's it's super laid back. Um, there's not normally not a lot of people there, so really, I feel like it's packed with every like mm -hmm. good time for me kid. to just read. I brought a, a, a book I just bought out there and uh, just chilled, drank some water. Cause on the fourth, I went to Disney Sea for my first time out here. So You're at Disney Sea, yeah, huh? It's really cool. I have not yet been that, doing that yet. Yeah. Not a huge Disney fan, but it was a blast. They had cold beer. <laughs> packed? So. I went on a, on Tuesday this 4th, so not really. Because you got things oh, yeah, on a Japanese, Japanese holiday. Japanese don't even have yeah. a, the 4th of July. It was more packed than you would expect it to be, though. Yeah, I mean, I, f I feel like there's no way there's not never going to be packed there. Yeah, it's Disney. <laughs> Unless COVID happened again. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, yeah. God, I hope not. Dude, the sledding just straight shot to the ground. Yeah, I know. And <laughs> because of the clouds, it normally is like pink and purple and would have been really cool. Well, but. dude, the weather here has been so ass lately. It's I know. been killing me. Luckily, it's been good for a little bit, like right after work, where I can go get an outdoor workout in and sweat my ass off. Yeah. But I've actually been loving how hot it is just because yeah, my I, workouts have been. I actually like sweating my ass off during workout. Oh like, yeah. When I'm running for a while. Absolutely. It's great. I went into the gym the other day after working out outside for like an hour and the AC and the fans were like pissing me off. <laughs> I was like, dude, why is it so cold in here? Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't feel I, like I'm I working out. I don't even out. see in that gym anymore. At Ranger, I go to Halsey all the time now because it's outdoor and this, this weather this time of year. I go to Halsey, well, you don't do the morning. Mm -mm. Always afternoon. Um, but yeah, and my training totally changed for SRT, so okay. I'm not lifting weights so You're trying to so get, like, often. I'm trying to get like endurance, muscle endurance, cardiovascular endurance. Like yeah. I'm, I'm running a lot, wearing my weight vest. I'm rucking a lot, going ahead and starting those stretch fractures so that <laughs> when I get there, I'm not doing it for yeah. the first time. Dude, run the whole fucking flight line with the I do with the weight vest. Yep. Dude, fuck. It's obviously a lot slower than I do it without, but um. I ruck it quite often, actually. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I still never tried a weight vest in my whole life. It's a really good workout. The weight's not the hard part. The fact that- It moves around. It's, no, it's squeezing you. So oh. your inhale and exhale feel constricted. <laughs> so you have to learn to breathe in a vest. It's really weird. Yeah. I would say that's the only frustrating part. I thought, the, I, thought I felt like the most frustrating was like how it would be moving. Mine doesn't move too much. If it, anything, it bounces a little bit when I run. But normally I can put it on tight, but then you put it on tight. I think it's the sand ones that move. Restriction. The what? The sand ones? Yeah, they, they'll move around a bit. Um, mine, I'm lucky, mine has like concaved plates. So like they kind of like mold to my chest and like wrap. So it doesn't really like have the straight plate feel. Yeah. Like the 511 vests are like, they're nice, but they're just straight flak jacket plates. So like, it does a lot of bouncing, so. Yeah. Fucking, um, <laughs> you wore it during a hike we went on. Mm. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, when we did Fuji. Yeah, Mount Fuji. And yeah. you like hated, <laughs> dude, I've never seen you like that ever. Dude, yeah. You were like so pissed at the end. Yeah, I was not. <laughs> and everyone was just fucking happy-go-lucky. Yeah. And I was like, I don't think we'd climb the same mountain. I don't, I don't know if we all just did the same thing because fuck this. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I'm going again. I'm, I'm definitely going to do it again. Really? Yeah, but I'm going to do it obviously without the vest. Oh, okay. It wasn't the you vest made it bad. You were Yeah. I could do it without the vest. I would have no issue. Well, yeah, I for, yeah, you had the vest. That's yeah. why I was like, this is probably why he hates it so much. Yeah. Okay. And it wasn't the ascent. It was the descent. Well, yeah, you're just it's fucking all... blowing your knees up. Yep. Just walking through the beach switchbacks through beach sand for fucking yeah actually uh you want to do it again because not me but so my uh i took leave for it and then turns out i can't leave because i have to do some training so i bought a hut for these dates would you want them you bought a hut mountain hut oh what station station 11 what what dates Seven and eight of August. Oh yeah, that's plausible. Mon Monday and Tuesday. It's it's one people, two people. You can bring a homie. And you can't. I cannot. 
let me let me let me yeah. get, let me get back to do you. Do your do your thing. Yeah, because I'll just be coming back from Okinawa, to, but because oh, I, I say August, that. I'll, I'll come back August. on the eighteenth. Oh, okay, I was like, I'll okay. be back for like two weeks, like three weeks. I could I could I could definitely swing on Monday and Tuesday. Uh, but. let me know because I'm uh, if not, I'm gonna try to sell them. Okay. What I might do is try to see if my dad will hurry up and fly the fuck out here, and then okay. me and him will do it. He'd probably be way easier out of the hut, because all you gotta do is Well, that's what I wanted ascend. to do anyways. Yeah, stay the night, watch the sunrise, and then descend. It's, uh, I bought those six months in advance. Yeah. Because they're so impossible to get. Yeah, they're, yeah, you have to. That's why I wanted to do it, because I wanted to video the whole thing, because I wanted that to be a big video. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Damn, I would have loved to do that with you, though, so we could get like a sick video, have some mountain talks. Yeah. But yeah, I got fucked. They uh I don't know. I don't know if you know, but I'm leaving very soon. And unless uh, something changed. I feel like we talked about this, but did something change? You're leaving sooner than you thought before? Uh end of August. Oh shit, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. For like three months. Oh, you're 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 not leaving leaving. Oh no. You're going no. underway? Yeah, underway. Okay. Yeah, the water. <laughs> yeah. And then, I don't know anything about that. <laughs> Boat life. Can suck. Yeah, whatever, dude. <laughs> this guy has the craziest job in the Navy. I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> not yet, dude. Not yet. Not even. Air crew is not that crazy. If yeah, you think you're, about You're like, the crazy, weird air crew. Yeah. You're the air crew, like, that's an air crew? Yeah, that's a job. <laughs> <laughs> like, who the fuck are you saving? Yeah, nobody. Because <laughs> if that thing falls, you're dead. Yeah. No chance. We did actually, crazy thing, there was a uh, Mayday call the other day. Mayday. And we had a distress call on the, so like it went out to all the towers. Everyone was like, hey, there's a distress call. We got a plane that went down. So they sent one of our birds up for SAR. Obviously we can't go down to rescue, but we can spot. You just. We fly low and slow. C-130 just fucking. Slow and slow. You said you're working on a C-12? C-12, UC-12F. This is what a C-12F is. Yeah, it's not super exciting, but we got a SAR call. The only reason they sent our bird up is because our our guy, one of our, like the LPO of our shop is a past rescue swimmer. Uh, so he ran to our OPSO and was like, let's get a C-12 in the air. See what's up? Low and slow and see if we can locate these guys. I mean, they, you could probably see it. We, it's in our mission qualifications. Like we really? can. Could you jump out? No. <laughs> so you can only do SAR location. So you would pin them longitude latitude and then get a, a helo out oh, there okay. to get them out of the water that makes sense but um we can fly low enough and slow enough that we can actually when was that actually because our bird literally had to do a distress it was it was the same day because you guys got birds in the air okay everyone got birds in the air quickly Did out, out to happen? the bay i don't know what the because i don't have any op, my ops won't tell me anything so also, probably not something we can, even if we did know. Yeah. Probably not something we can talk about to, to the podcast. <laughs> yeah, that was weird because literally I was like fixing an aircraft and you're like, this needs to go up now. now. I was like, why? It's missing like four bolts. <laughs> Fuck it. Send it up. <laughs> That's exactly what happens. And then it happened. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Your job is wild to me. Yeah. No, but um, yeah, I should be leaving soon. But like, I hopefully we'll be back for Christmas so we can go boarding one yeah, more time. That'd be ideal. Because I don't, I don't leave Japan for another till 2025. So I'm supposed to detach May of 24. Um, I'll probably detach April 1st and take a month of leave, get some shit squared away, and then I got to go to a couple schools, and okay. then I'll be settling in Little Creek, Virginia. Little Creek. Yep. It sounds like there's nothing out there. Supposedly it's better than Norfolk, less traffic, nicer base. Really? Um, but it's, it's, it's where the teams are, it's where DevGrew is. Um, it's all the spec, spec, spec war side. It's yeah, all Virginia? Well. Yep. Because we got, it's East Coast and West Coast, they're split between the two. Yeah, so. I mean ours is Coronado. Yeah. So, and I've actually, I wanted West Coast, but they sent me East Coast and um, I, I got a buddy in East Coast, so that's cool. I'm gonna get to go work with him. I worked with him on C12s prior, um, but he told me like, dude, it's better here. We're farther away from DC, so life is better. I guess that makes sense. Because um, you you think they would just like get San Diego because they're like, yeah. you're right here. Yeah. No, no uniform. 
like contractor clothes. Yeah, dude. You're, it's it's gonna be a totally different world. I'm an active duty contractor. So With no I travel Navy regulations. Commercial airlines. <laughs> I yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> ho yeah. I mean obviously there's gonna be Yeah when we're home we shave, we put our type threes on, we you know, report to HQ, but when we're out on op it's so sick. You are not in the military. This is the goal. From the gouge I've gotten. I'm no professional yet. I'm like I have so much to learn. So Yeah, get top secret. Mm-hmm. I'm doing it right now. Oh, I'm gonna, on like step eleven of thirty seven. They're gonna areas. love this. Yeah. <laughs> they will. I don't care. I already thought about it. It's so funny because literally last night I was up to like one thirty in the morning working on my T S like on Equip. Dude, that shit is annoying. It's insane. Yeah. So right now I'm at previous employers and I'm like, oh, dude, bro. I had so many jobs. What the fuck? No, it's terrible. Uh, and you're like, learn it all in like for all the 10 years you're at? They're like, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah. The crazier part is how much of it is already filled in. And I'm like, <laughs> how? How did you know that? Like, yeah. <laughs> so, um, but that's helping a lot. But yeah, they want to know everything. 10 years of addresses. Who knew you when you were in that address? 10 years of jobs. Who knew you when you were in that job? Yeah, I just finished mine. Yeah. And, I mean, I passed, but I was like, yeah. that was terrible. Yeah, I mean, I have nothing to worry about. That's the good thing. Like, I'm filling all this stuff out, and I'm like, okay, even if I forget something in the on-phone interview, I can just be like, oh, shit, I'm so sorry. Like, I totally blanked on that. Yeah, you know I mean, what I mean? Sure. They're looking for national security issues. Like, yeah. are you a threat to national security? Yeah. Why um, do you go to Thailand every fucking day? Of the <laughs> yeah, why do you go every other weekend for every, every, every weekend you've been in Japan? Like, luckily, like, international travel, that whole thing, the only thing I've done is Vietnam. I went for, like, four days oh, yeah, yeah. for backpacking. So, like, they're not, that one I can quickly answer. I don't time. know. Just kidding. Like, why did you spend $8,000 in Vietnam one night? Like, <laughs> Do the math, okay? <laughs> you heard of you know, alcohol? They have ping pong shows there. <laughs> you heard of alcohol? Why do you like Japan? Man. What's your, what's your fa top thing you like Japan? That's a really hard question for me because I've absolutely fallen in love with this country. Oh, um, yeah. I mean, I feel like anyone that comes here, you're going to fall in love with it. That's the crazy thing, though. <laughs> that's my least favorite part about Japan is the people that walk around like, fuck this place. Yeah. I never want to come here. I'm like, dude, there's not a place you could send that person or those people in the world where they'd f find a reason to be happy. No, yeah. It's yeah. just like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Um, so I think, like, I'm going to give you a bunch of very basic answers, but they're just, it's just the truth. The cleanliness of Japan is absolutely absurd. Uh, the fact that I can walk into any train station and not be afraid to sit my ass on a toilet <laughs> is... Amazing. Anywhere. Yeah. You go to a convenience store, like yep. a gas station, like kind of convenience store. Yep. Spotless. Fucking spotless. Um, the safety of Japan. I'm always like, future goals. Definitely want like wife and kids, and you know, I want to, I want to be the family man. So when I walk around Japan and I see like seven year old kids on the train going to school by themselves, I'm like, that's <laughs> insane. Like you insane. could never do that in the states. It's it should be the norm. Yeah. It's not in the States, so that's one thing I love here. Uh, you very, very, it's not very often that you have to worry about the safety of your people in Japan. Um, no, that's earthquakes, weird. stuff like that, natural disasters, absolutely, but. Well, even the buildings here with earthquakes, like, yeah. are, they're built for earthquakes. Yeah. Which is insane. Yeah. I had that one a few months, like a month and a half yeah. ago. This house was, I could see everything moving. The yeah. walls were like, <laughs> and I was just like, I don't feel like it's gonna collapse. Like it's fine. <laughs> it's insane. Um, and then, sure enough, next thing that that morning, my Japanese grandparents, all my close Japanese friends. Hey man, are you okay? Is the house okay? Like pretty crazy earthquake last night. I'm like, That's wild. so yeah, cleanliness, safety, um, and then two things that are kind of not necessarily Japan, but um, just. A combination of Japan and myself is like the relationships I've built here, uh, the friendships I've made here, and then the perspective I've gained here and the head and heart change I've had since I've been here. Yeah. Um, I'd like to think that the person I've molded into in my time in Japan would have happened regardless, but I think Japan definitely had a huge role in that. Um, I'm sure it definitely changed your perspective about life. 
Yeah, absolutely. And then a, a little bit of the isolation away from family and all the friends you knew. Yeah. Um, that does a lot for you too. Uh, I think it's honestly, I think it's a make or break moment for a lot of people. Super pivotal for me. It ended up being a really good thing. So yeah, it's either you really love it or you absolutely really hate it. Yeah. It's either you go explore everything or you want to just stay in your room. Yep. Which is so crazy to me that how someone could just stay in your room in a place like this so beautiful. Yeah. So and you can it's it's those people that I mean, what's the saying? You can lead a horse to water, but when you get there, you're still gonna need a step stool to fuck it in the ass. <laughs> no, I, was like, I was like, what? No. I was like, uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> step stool to fuck it. <laughs> no, I never heard that one. Yeah, no. Uh, you know what I'm saying? You can. No, I can't it. make a drink or something. But no, that's really those kind of people. <laughs> you, you can't, you can't change those kind of people, man. That's that's gonna be the, for the rest of their lives. Hopefully not, but yeah. I've had so many friends that I'm like, dude, just get out of the house this weekend. I'm gonna take you on the sickest adventure, and they're yeah. like, no, dude, I don't know. Like, I'm like, bro, what? Yeah, that I get sucks. It. I want my kids and my grandkids and my great grandkids to see photos of me and videos of me and be like, damn, he was a badass always searching and seeking out more out of life, you know what I mean? Scuba diving, climbing mountains, jumping out of airplanes, yeah. like riding motorcycles in every country he can, like. No, I, uh, I totally agree. Yeah. One thing I really love about this place is how fucking quiet it is. That's a one, that, that's one I didn't touch on, but I absolutely it's, it's quiet love. everywhere that you need it to be. Yep, even if you go to the city, it's quiet. All you, the only noise is city noise, yeah. not people or sidewalk bands or, which there's a, also a beautiful culture in that. Like you go to New York and it's dirty and it's, there's a dude in the corner playing a trumpet or playing the, the bucket drums. Like yeah. there's something beautiful about that too, but. Yeah, it's cool. Um, this Japan culture, not every aspect of it, cause there's also many cons to Japan's culture. Um, but surface level what you get on a daily basis it's it resonates so well with my soul like i'm a very chill like relaxed vibes i want to feel at peace that is like my happy place so japan like falls into that category so well yeah um definitely a huge thing i love about it. that's why i like keep staying here yeah we fight here for five years right now yeah i, I was gonna do four but srt was like you either come here yeah, now or yeah. and that job's super important to me so that's a good little gig you got there yeah most importantly for what it'll do for me when i get out um yeah and then i like how everyone's so polite to you i mean i've gotten actually the other week i was out with a girl and um she, you know, cause she spoke Japanese. I'm like, yo, just yeah. take me to like something crazy. Yeah. And she took me to like her favorite sake bar. And the fucking sake guy, at the bartender, yeah. he like spoke to her in Japanese and she's like, I think he's saying he hates your aroma, like your smell. You had clone on? Yeah. Yeah, they're so weird about that. I'm like, yeah, you know what? I think none of you guys have clone. Yeah. I, yeah, I read, I, I read about that before I moved out here. Like, um, they're really weird about clone. Um, well, I never, I don't smell it on anyone. Yeah, nobody wears it. I've seen like maybe, or smelled some maybe from some girls, but like, yeah. I don't really do it. Like, I don't normally yeah. smell. Yeah, so it's so weird because for us in the States as a man, like if you leave the house without putting clone on, like, <laughs> yeah. you're, like what you're you not gonna smell like anything. Yeah. No, so, yeah, so I literally just like, uh, finish my drink. I'm like, okay, we'll just leave. I, I just think he just like was <laughs> politely respecting me to like get out of here. Yeah, which is I have mixed feelings about that whole part of the culture. I would say part of one of the cons in my head is like, as much as I enjoy that they're just like constantly polite, like oh yeah, like yeah, I got those I want. Like they'll just like bow until you can't even see them anymore. Like <laughs> I love that, but. I, so I like, I also like this back to like New York, East coast, you know, up North type thing. People are like, you know, you know, fuck you. Like, I don't give a shit about your problems, but 
if you were like down bad and needed somebody, they'd fucking help you out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they're not nice, but they're kind. In Japan, they're nice, but I don't know if they're necessarily kind. You know, behind closed doors or in their head, they're probably like, dude, yeah, fuck this guy. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, they're just secretly doing it. So, that's just their way of um, life. But I've just learned to enjoy it for what I see it as, and it, all yeah. I see is kindness. So, I'm like, okay, cool. Um, and then I also have a different approach, like my friends that I've actually made friends with. I mean, Japanese people, they don't, it's not. It's not that, you know what I mean? I've oh, shared yeah. tears with these people, like, you know. Oh, this is what I was gonna bring up. Um, yeah. You said you have a, you say? Grandparents? Grandparents, what is that, what the hell is that? So, it's <laughs> Gigi and Baba. Um, <laughs> How the fuck did this happen? Cause so, I always see you like, they, I heard you had like, you invited me to your party, but I was already like out in Tokyo. Yeah. But you had a party here and you had all, like I saw in your story, you had like a bunch of like Japanese people in here. Yeah, it was probably 15, 15 people that night. Yeah. Um, so the local bar route down at Hito's, yeah, yeah. um, I went in there with a buddy one night. Um, we, we drank a little bit, had some fun. I got behind the bar, started making my own drinks cause the dude didn't know how to make the drinks who now the dude Hito is like one of my best friends. He comes here and sleeps in the guest bedroom when he needs it. Um, that's so cool. And that's everyone, all the people that were here that night and Gigi and Baba, I all met through that bar. Um, and now, I mean, I say they're my Japanese grandparents because of their age and the role they play in my life. Uh, they're giving me that grandparent love here in Japan. They, you know, but like, they check on me. They, they take me to dinner on occasion. They bought me a Roomba when I moved into the house to vacuum the house. Um, a Roomba? There's been months where Wait, they- They buy you a robot thing? Yeah, the little robot vacuum. Where's that at? It's over, like, tucked behind my couch. Um, Damn, that's nice. There's been months that like they'll call me and be like, "Hey, is your rent paid this month? Like, are you okay? Do you need anything?" Like, so it's just <laughs> they're just really, really kind people. Um, that's what's wild to me is you're the only motherfucker that has gotten probably like that close to like someone out here. Mm. Like, that's just like you know, like a family kind of oriented. Yeah. Because I don't. I, every person I've talked to, no. There's, yeah. My neighbors don't like me, but. Yeah, my neighbors don't. Well, they don't until they saw me in the driveway with Gigi and Baba one day. And we were having like a Japanese conversation oh, yeah, and like I hugged him goodbye. And he, the, my neighbor witnessed it all. This is like after he'd called the cops on me for like my music being just slightly too loud. A ever since he witnessed that conversation with Gigi and Baba in the driveway, like they brought me some things. I gave them some gifts I'd been waiting to give them. We spoke a few words in Japanese, hugged. I said, you know, Matane, like, see you guys later. And then, ever since then, he's never spoken a word to me or bothered me. I think he's like, oh shit, Japanese people like this guy, and he's like, a good dude. I should probably stop being an asshole. Not like, Chad. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he, he, so you play your music so loud? You know what's crazy about my house? I can play my fucking music so loud. Dude. And nobody will say shit. Well, now he he probably wouldn't. I've definitely played it super loud some nights. The, the the annoying thing is the first time he ever did it, it was like a Sunday at like eleven o'clock in the afternoon, or eleven o'clock in the morning, twelve o'clock in the afternoon. He like called the police. Please show up at my door. Where's your bass? It's all from the bar. Oh, it's on the bar. And the bar is turned all the way down right now. The bass is. So if I turn it up, that's why, that's why he called. The bass was turned up. Oh. So he wasn't hearing the music. He was feeling the thump. Like I have a whole bass. Yeah. <laughs> I almost bought the bar and the bass, but. The bows? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was on sale and I was like, dude. <laughs> best, best thing I've bought since I've been here though. It's so good. Music's great. Yeah, it's dope. No, that's awesome about your uh, Japanese grandparents. Yeah. That's awesome. I I, and that's, that's not, it's not just them. I mean, Masa and Risa, I threw yeah. their gender reveal party here a few weeks ago. Like, oh, really? They're having a little girl and I got to be the one to organize the party and buy them a cake with a pink inside so they could find out they're having a girl. And I hung up balloons and there's probably 20 people in my house. It was, it was cool. Maybe. But to me, that's the, that, that's the stuff I'm gonna remember most about Japan. Those relationships I built. And, if you talk to my people that know me back home, my mom, my sisters, my good friends, they would tell you it's right on track with like who I am. Like, dope. Yeah. So I've been I've been blessed, dude. Been blessed through and through since I got here. Um, but that's not to say I didn't also like put in the work and make sure I keep a clean nose and 
Yeah. It takes work, you know what I mean? Can, I mean, get we, out here. We, we've had some rowdy nights. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've definitely. <laughs> that's like a whole other podcast. <laughs> yeah, um, for sure. Yeah. But, sick. But, yeah, um, I think we're. Yeah, we talked for about an hour here. Is this an hour? It is an hour. Yeah, hour and two minutes. I hope you enjoyed your. I don't know if you ever done a podcast. You ever talked? No, I don't. Th- not not like this. No, you know, me and Cam stuff. We've we'd have small conversations oh. with the camera, but like I've never. Vlog. Yeah, I've never sat and. It's cool. But I would love to. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a really cool concept. Like I a, wish I could find that someone I could sit with regularly, and we I'm talk about do current events week. or you know oh, yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. whatever just just something that's like continuous. You know. No. I'm oh. trying to do it weekly, yeah. but it's. But you're now you're leaving in fucking August, dude. So. I mean, no. I mean, I still got three more weeks. You know. I mean, I'm trying to get one next week. Going so. on your way. Well, let me know. Yeah. I'm, I'm down. Sure. I'm down to come whenever we can, and we can always brainstorm and. I always uh, look for yeah. Pick a different topic. You know what I mean? You know. Something. I always look for. Uh, I mean, I'm always looking for the lighting, but yeah. it's clearly shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sucks too. It's so crazy because it's normally so good. Like I was, I was waiting for this time of night because normally it's way better. Yeah. Like, no, but the clouds kind no of came in and fucked. And then that, or what? Saturday and Sunday, I think it's fucking raining again. Yeah, I don't know. I was hoping to go to the beach tomorrow, but we'll see. Yeah. But sweet. Yeah. I'm glad I liked it. This is Jordan again. <laughs> Shaking hands and kissing babies. Oh. We just end it right here. Yeah. Ha <laughs> <laughs>